Okay, my friends, I'm going to make this extremely simple, extremely easy. I was going to go into detail, and I will in another video, but right now, this is extremely important to pass this news along. This is, this is uh, research, so please, YouTube, do not stop this, or anywhere this shows up. This is from very valid sources, UCLA, UCLA Health, China, and so forth. Now, this article originally published by UCLA Samuel Newsroom. It's a studied detailing the research published in advanced materials. And what is the research about? It's a researchers from UCLA and China have found that catalase, which is an enzyme, it's a naturally occurring enzyme. We're going to talk about enzymes just very briefly. It holds potential as a low cost, it's very cheap, therapeutic drug to treat COVID-19 symptoms and suppress the replication, which is just continuing to be reinfected of coronavirus inside the body. That's basically, in my world, a cure. You take it for what it's worth. I'm showing de research only. I'm not telling you to take anything, don't take anything. We're going to look at a couple of the quick studies of this detailed research and because they say that this catalase, which is a na produced naturally and used by humans, animals, plants, inside cells, it's an antioxidant and kickstarts the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide builds up in your body, extremely reactive molecule, and it's H2O2. H2O1, really, H2O, is water, and then you end up with one extra oxygen. So if you can break it down, you've got water, and then one extra oxygen, you're happy as it can be. But if you have that H2O2 all together in your system, you're going to be damaged. And what's it going to do to you? It's going to inflame your tissues. All right? Once you get inflamed tissues, you start, you're, you're in trouble. And... Why this begins, I believe, is you get a bacteria called COVID-19, and it lodges itself into what's called a nucleolus in what's called an organelle, and it creates a ribosome, and that ribosome is, a, is not alive, it's a half of a living thing, basically, a virus, and it gets encapsulated with a little membrane, it's called a capsid, and it gets squirted out of the cell that it was in, this organelle, and out of the cell into the bloodstream until it finds the chemistry that it wants to attack, and then it does its job. An enzyme works exactly the same way, and it, it, they, they do unbelievable, I mean just so far off the scale, when something gets catalyzed, something breaks down just absolutely, I, I have a hard time believing it's true, that one molecule can break down se 10 to the 7, 10 to the 7th molecules of hydrogen peroxide, I don't know if that's true, in one second. Now, anyway, this is what they have found out, that this particular catalase can affect COVID-19. And let's see how it affects it. Okay, this is uh, this article in Advanced Materials by, by um, UCLA and the people in China. And it's about this enzyme, which is a therapeutic for COVID-19. And these, all these people are authors. And I've tried contacting them, but, and it just was, it goes back a month ago. But I haven't heard another word about it, other than this article. And it, I, I had to go search for this. Nobody, it's not like it's a readily available. Now listen, here's what it says. COVID-19 pandemic taking a significant toll on people worldwide, and there are currently no specific antivirus drugs or vaccines. Herein, it is a therapeutic based on catalase. All right, this is what they're going to be talking about, a therapeutic based on catalase, an antioxidant enzyme. An enzyme is something that breaks down chemistry that can effectively break down hydrogen peroxide and minimize the downstream reactive oxygen species. If you can't break that hydrogen peroxide down, <laughs> you're being attacked. Um, it's excessively produced resulting from infections and inflammatory processes. All right, so you have to break that down. Catalase assists to regulate production of the cytokines 
to protect oxidative injuries and repress replication of SARS-CoV-2. Now, it protects against the oxidative injuries, which is like the inflammation and so forth, but it also says it represses replication. It represses, it represses replication. That means it stops it. It kills it. It stops it from coming back. Whoops. And they say the, the reason they can claim this is that it's demonstrated in human leukocytes and in alveolar epithelial cells and also in rhesus macaques without any noticeable toxicity. Let's just read it one more time. Catalase assists to regulate the production of cytokines. Cytokines are attackers that are in your immune system. They go out and attack things and sometimes they create storms and they just come out and they attack everything. And they, they attack everything when they don't know how to attack. They just go crazy. But catalase assists to regulate the production of these attackers to protect oxidative injury and repress replication of the SARS-2. So it protects you against the damage and it gets rid of the SARS-2. Sounds like to me. And they did demonstrated this by human leukocytes and alveolar epithelial cells and rhesus macaques without noticeable toxicity. Such a therapeutic can be readily manufactured, low-cost potential treatment for COVID-19. And then it goes on and starts to talk about what they did. The severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus, has resulted in over 10 million cases globally. And then they go on to talk about cytokine storms. I, I, uh, while the pathogenic COVID-19 are elusive, accumulating evidence suggests that a subgroup of patients with severe COVID-19 might have cytokine storm syndrome. What that means is their body's trying to attack and it's not getting anywhere. So it calls on all of its resources. It's just attack the hell out of everything. Something's got to do so, and it doesn't because you don't have the right bacteria to create the right enzyme to create to kill the correct thing or to break down the correct product or to create the correct um, amino acids. So if any of those things is not right, you can't get to the end result, which is to break down the COVID-19 bacteria. And I'm telling you, it's a bacteria. They say it's a virus. I don't think they're even looking for a bacteria. Only way a bacteria, and it, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, the only way a virus can occur is it has to be programmed by what's called messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is nothing more than a whole very, 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 very elegant sequence of thousands of molecules in a specific order. And that literally is a program. All right, that's the problem. That's the program. Now, that program didn't come from nowhere. A programmer spits out half of its program into these ribosomes and makes them go out and do the job for them. Marguerite is at Harvard right now. She's studying ribosomes, and we're going to see if we can get some help from Harvard. This, they need to start looking at this as a bacteria residing in the nucleolus of the organelle that creates the ribosomes, and I'm sure they're going to find that there is a bacteria that is different than everybody else's bacteria. If you don't have COVID, you're not going to have it. If you have COVID, you're going to have it. And that's the only way you can create these enzymes. There's no other way it can be done. You prove it to me that you can make an enzyme from nothing. They think that it just pops up from nowhere and spreads from person to person, a dead thing that has no way to do. It's just, it really makes no sense at all. It's a, it's a living creature, bacteria that creates literally pills, little, little capsids, capsules, and they go out into the bloodstream and they might use my cough and spit them out somewhere and they land on the table or in somebody else's mouth or in their eyeballs or something and they get sick because the capsid opens up its membrane and then its package finds the, the molecules in your body that it wants to invade and 
the case is closed. Now, it appears that it, the COVID virus attacks squamous, squamous, however you want to hurt it both ways, it, that particular tissue, which is your lungs and your throat and your nose and all that. And then once it breaks that down and it becomes scarred, you're going to have a hard time repairing it. It's going to be scar tissue, I think, from then for going forward. So you got to get in front of this before you start to get all scarred up. Because once you get all scarred up in your heart and your lungs and all these rubbery tissues stop being rubbery, they become scar tissue. I, I'm not sure you're going to have a good result at the end of that. Now, maybe your body can go in and repair that if it had enough of the correct ingredients. I have no idea. But nobody has an idea. I don't even think they're looking for a bacteria right now because there's a big thing I saw that says, it is not a bacteria. COVID is a virus. Well, there is no such thing as a virus until you have the bacteria to make the virus. I'm sorry. It is caused by a bacteria. No, I'm just teasing you. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> now, I, but I do, I, I, I just posted this just a day or two ago. Is COVID a virus or a bacteria? And that was after I saw that thing about, it's not a virus. I mean, it's not a bacteria, it's a virus. Well, you cannot get a virus without a bacteria. That is what is called a, an organelle. This is attached to inside your cells, little bitty ones like this, and they're little factories. And outside of this nucleolus, programs come. And they get programmed, these little balls, which are called ribosomes. Those little balls are in capsules, just like a pill. They go out through your system until that pill attaches to the thing it wants to kill. If it goes through your lungs and so forth, it spits out, it goes and hurts somebody else and hatches in them. They are not alive. And the only possible way that they can get programmed through messenger RNA, which is not alive, is if somebody alive in their programs. They don't just pop up by themselves. In the nucleolus, I say, we should be able to find the bacteria that's creating the virus. This is what they call the virus, which is these little balls. Now, I have a friend who has, I believe he has 16 different laboratories that he runs in the food service industry. And he's responsible for every single thing that happens in that factory all the way from the products coming in to the environment to the people that work there to the packaging to the equipment to the service of to the delivery until you open that package he's responsible to make sure that it's healthy for you and that's a lot of bacterial knowledge going on in there from I mean uh, just a lot he's 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 uh, and he's got like 16 of these labs in food production service areas now you know big factories no he told me that he believes that they can take these organelles out of cells and interrogate this nucleolus and see what's in it now I don't know if that's true or not and I don't know if he knows it's true or not because he was a little on the edge of that um, and we didn't have much time to talk, but if it can be done, and I, if the new research they're doing and the new photography they have, they may actually be able to do while well, it's alive and pumping this information out. Because I'm going to show you how these things create, well, I'm not going to do it in this video. I'm going to make another video that's going to be very, very inclusive for doctors for the researchers that are trying to understand what is going on because you know what they're doing is they're trying to create a vaccine and that's good if you could make the vaccine that sends an information down what happens to this nucleolus somehow gets implanted with a master programmer and it almost seems to me like the, the nucleolus has to be able to be invaded and occupied by a master programmer, whether that's a bacteria or whether it's some form of a program. I really don't know, but I'd like to know what kind of bacteria is inside the nucleolus. Let's just leave it at that. But, but I'm going to tell you right now, enzymes 
are uh, absolute requirements. And what happens is the bacteria, and I say they're bacteria to create the enzymes, and we know that they, when, when you have bad bacteria, when you had antibiotics and it's killed the probiotics in your gut, you, and I had surgery twice because of antibiotics, so trust me, I know about it, and I studied the hell out of this, and they are terrible for you unless you can repopulate your digestive system with probiotics very quickly because they can turn on you two days, you're, it's, you're real sick. And you can, 24 hours, you're back running and jumping. All right, anyway, let's leave it at that for now. But the enzymes and um, this catalase uh, appears to be pretty interesting. I would start doing a little investigation about it. You're not hearing anything from the mainstream about this. And I think that has a lot to do with money because they've got a lot invested in making vaccines and so forth. And uh, so I, I'd hate to think that that's their their main motivation, but who never knows. I say let your body do its job with enzymes.